Hey, good morning. I'm down at um, Ballast Wharf this morning. And uh, uh, near uh, the end, end of B Steps. That was a, um, uh, my friend, real, the real Andy Harris on Instagram, um, pointed me in this direction. Because it's local, so it's good and I wanted to have a look. So I'm down on the foreshore this morning, um, scouting. Because I've not been here before, I want to see what's here and, and what the terrain is like and whether it's worth uh, um, in the future coming down here. So uh, I'm going to um, just head down and uh, have a little look and see what the foreshore is like. So um, let me uh, flip this over if I can. There we go. So this is uh, so you can see where I am. And just across there is the Isle of Dogs. And um, there's a few people on the foreshore down there. Um, and then you can see the O2. So you can get a sense geographic where I am. And next to that is Morden Wharf. And then you come round and this is Ballast Wharf. So I'm going to have a little walk around and, uh, and see. I mean, this is really just uh, location scouting, really kind of get a sense of what's here. I'm not going to be here so long because I'm on the route to, <laughs> to do my morning shop um, because it's local and uh, so I thought I'd come down. Such a beautiful day today. So I imagine that this big uh, monstrosity here, this uh, beautiful, um, God, the ironwork on it is incredible, uh, must be uh, Ballast Wharf. Uh, I'll go a bit closer in a minute so you can have a look and it's just gorgeous, beautiful. So it's interesting, the um, tide line here, black bits, uh, I think uh, these are bits of coal course on the original mud block that would have been fantastic because all of that's money isn't it but what do you get a sense here and I'll show you in a minute I don't know if you can see it on all these bits here these are bones here and here and further down uh, they've all accumulated there's an awful lot of bones. That's interesting, you can see the tide lines. They're always interested to have a look there, see what the um, foreshore has deposited. You see, if you follow that black line down there, what the, um, what the tide has uh, deposited, rather. steps there should you get caught out but this um it's like a point down there which is quite narrow it's not very low tide today it's about a point eight i think and it's low tide in about 15 or so minutes but i wasn't really coming down here to do a full-on lark i was just coming down here to just to explore a little bit So here you start to see uh, all the bones which uh, collect in that corner. It's just the way the tide works. So you're, I'll do it slowly and you can see the bones here.
here. This is just uh, bones. How many bones? Here. So these would have been thrown in the river, and it's just that they've uh, collected on this particular spot. Um, but nothing, I, I would think, malicious. Just slaughterhouses, restaurants. I guess knackers yards, they just, uh, once they're done with the bones, uh, it just went in the river. So here's the sense of this, these are the bones. That sound, that wonderful sound of walking. <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful down here, lovely and peaceful for sure. So this is like a little bone beach, bone alley where all the bones are collected. And it's uh, in this corner here. Incredible this um, the structure here, just the colour of it and the way the paintwork on it is cracked. It's hard to see uh, kind of through the lens here, but uh, closer up is just incredible. Those just there, that's the steps when you come down. Just beautiful structure, isn't it? On here. interesting actually the foreshore here just kind of really super solid not much give on it or kind of one massive concretion so I guess the things I mean I would imagine in my limited experience the things you'd be looking for is things that are getting caught in the rocks if there's everything else is solid Go down a bit further down here and see where that goes. I just need to keep an eye on the skateboards because I don't know this place very well and I don't want to get caught short. That beautiful look at this. <laughs> just the architecture, stunning, right? I mean, just a heavy industrial kind of 
and stuff and then this uh, leads to it's interesting because I've cycled past those two chimneys and I've always wondered where they go and now I know it goes out onto the foreshore and uh, for those uh, uh, just coming in now it's um this is a uh, ballast wharf down in Greenwich just going for a walk this morning bit of a scout not been here before and I just wanted to get a sense of uh, the terrain and have a quick look, see what's here. Can you see that? Yeah. Always interesting when you see something round that gets caught in there. Is of course a washer. But it's a beautiful round shape, isn't it, that you're looking for? That uh, perfect circle in an imperfect world. And interesting, you can see how it got caught there in the rock, and that's also kind of the things that I look for uh, with the coins that are, are traveling with the tide and then get caught um, between the rocks and sit there before they get picked up again and then go on their journey. Yeah, if they don't get found by myself or another one. But I always kind of look at that round circle. And sometimes it's funny because like if I'm walking uh, along here it's a uh, you've got to change the perspective sometimes so it's always good to, to stop sometimes and just get down on your knees and just study the ground from a different angle and then you see different things I think it was a mudlock the other day uh, called Ollie and I asked for his uh, number one mudlocking tip uh, and he said be nosy and I think that's, uh, I thought, oh yeah, brilliant. Yeah, be nosy, be curious on anything. Pick it up, because you just never quite know um, what it is. Do you know what this is? <laughs> so this is funny. So if you know, uh, then you'll know. But if you don't know, then you won't know. Um, I shall leave that there. That's funny. insoles into my uh, wellies and oh my gosh it just makes such a world of difference actually when uh, you're walking just uh, especially on terrain like this it makes such a difference Uh, put down 
Victorian time. Well, I mean, it's not native to, to the Thames, but you see these chalk patches, and it's where the boats used to land. And they put uh, chalk down there to um, protect uh, the base um, of the boat uh, because these are all hard rocks. And um, yeah, to, to protect the bottom of the, the boats. So this is always worth uh, having a scrape around because it means that, you know, there was a uh, human activity here. People getting on and off uh, the boats. So that's always worth a, a little scrape around. It's interesting, is it one little sandy bit here? Let's go a bit further down. I might go actually, because this is quite solid. This is all um, quite heavy talk. I might go towards the back wall. Always good to look at the back wall. Stuff sometimes gets dropped there. And you find some uh, some great finds. This is, uh, of course, where you know the mud lo uh, the the mud god uh, did a, an impromptu masterclass with us on a on a back wall and showed us how to look. Just brilliant. And um, yeah, the things that we found. Um, And essentially what he was doing uh, is that you go down to the bedrock and then you scrape around just a little bit around the bedrock and see what comes up there. The other thing is then start looking up for uh, uh, little bits of uh, as you as you get down to the bedrock and you and you move along. So this is, I think, kind of like uh, where it's hit the clay in the bedrock. So this is where stuff would have uh, got caught and then covered between the the rocks and, and the stones underneath. And then you said move along and follow it down. Interesting, last, uh, last couple of days ago, I can't remember when it was, <sighs> so funny, looks like a little hand. Um, a couple of days ago, I bumped into um, Finley on the foreshore. Now he's, um, he's 10 years old and he was there with his mum and uh, they were over, they were permit holders, they were over. And um, Finley was just incredible. He showed me how to find these Tudor pins because when I first saw him, he was just there, practically his nose touching um, the, the floor. And uh, I went over and said hello and introduced myself and asked him what he was doing. Uh, and then he showed me the pins that he found, these lovely little Tudor pins. Quite fantastic. And um, now I've never found Tudor pins only because, you know, um, I've never really looked. Um, 
And because I've never really looked, I've never really seen them. But of course, the the foreshore certainly at certain points are littered with these um, little pins. But anyway, he showed me how to find them and what to look for, and so um, I did. And then everywhere I looked, there were these pins. It was so funny. For the first time, I could actually see them. Amazing. This was Finley. He was amazing. He was 10 years old. Huge heart. Just wonderful and a real passion for mudlarking and for treasure hunting. What do you reckon? Should we have a scrape? Ah. Okay, first coin of the day. It's an interesting spot here really because, um, so you look at the big heavy rocks here and then you come around here and it's kind of lots of heavy rocks and there's kind of erosion happening here. And I always get a good sense about erosion happening here. And then of course, you know, the first thing I see the minute I do stop and come down, I don't know if you can see it there. So, this is where coins sometimes get caught. So it's always worth just stopping and on patches like this. I don't know if you can see it from there on the, uh, the kind of, I mean, it's only a penny, but uh, the principle is still there. So if you go deeper and start scraping, there might be other stuff and older stuff. But the principle is here, you see. Um, I don't know if you can notice the difference on there. So if you uh, go around and you see the kind of the, the rocks, 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 less rocks, and then kind of patchy bit, patchy bit, and a uh, bit of sandy kind of gravelly bit, and then rocks, rocks, rocks. Um, ah, you see, and there you go. There's another coin. Let me just come around here. Uh, can you see here? Just there. So again, another uh, modern coin, but the principle is there. And what I'm trying to, I guess, show you is, uh, you know, how the foreshore works and where things get dropped and caught. Because you want to ask why else would there be two coins like that lying together unless of course somebody was feeling lucky or unlucky and was making a wish and I have both their wishes in my hand that opens up another debate doesn't it should you be taking offerings from the foreshore especially if they're kind of um so I'm tempted here just to have a little scrape so if there's two coins just lying here and then if the principle's right about how things collect uh, in this particular area, then it's worth probably um, having a little um, scrape. Let me put this down and I'm gonna just, uh, bear with me one second while I just, I try and, uh, See, look here. Uh, let me... So again, this principle here, I don't know if you can see it, another coin. So that's the third coin in this little patch. Um, again, modern penny, but that's not the point. The point is the principle on how things collect on the foreshore and where you find them. So let me scrape a little bit more here. So the other thing he said as well is, you know, kind of look for bits of metal that collect like this. So, you know, again, it's an indication that things, things are collecting in this particular spot. Let me go a bit further back for you. You might be able to get a better view of, of what I'm doing. Yeah, there we go. So I'm, all, all I'm doing is just uh, taking, just gently scraping the surface on that. I'm only trying to show you what, what I learned really recently. I mean, I kind of knew this, but I never really did it because I never quite knew what I was doing, but I understood the I understand the principles a little bit better now. So it's interesting. So down here, then, is uh, this, uh, you know, clay mud. 
but really fascinating that there's three coins that are collected here. So I'm just going to keep scraping and see what else comes up. I'm looking for uh, bits of metal that gives an indication that things are being dropped and being caught. See that another coin. This one, tiny coin. <laughs> Again, modern coin. This one, uh, half p. But that's the what is it? The fourth coin in this particular little spot. Um, oh, can you imagine they were gold or silver? <sighs> Be nice, wouldn't it? But I'm happy with that. I love coins, so um, I'll take that any day, but I'm going to keep scraping. Let's see what else there is. Let me just have a look here. Wait one second. Ah, greetings to you as well, Melanie. Thank you for joining all the way from Arizona. Blimey, that's flipping miles away. It's the other side of the world. Actually, quite literally. So, uh, if you've just tuned in, this is, uh, I'm just trying to um, put into practice what I learned about finding coins. And um, I think we found, I can't remember, three or four coins now. In this particular spot all modern but they're collecting here so we're having a scrape down see if we can find more and hopefully find something older and even more hopefully find something gold or silver wouldn't that be amazing all right i'm going to move over just a, a little bit down to this patch So this is great. Oh, can we, let me show you here. So uh, if you could see, I don't know if you could see. This is great, just in this little patch. And uh, yeah, I mean they're you know they're modern. That's fine. But it's about to uh, understand the principle of of how things work on the foreshore and where to look. And um, and this is great. I kind of had a you know the the, the kind of little spot looks like it might yield and, and and there you go it does i mean brilliant let me um put this up here uh, i'll lose away so i don't lose them so ah, you see there's another coin so this is uh, um, brilliant. So this is, ah, let me uh, bring you up for a second here. So this is just fantastic, isn't it? Because, ah, so that's the fifth coin on a tiny spot. Again, modern, but you know, that's not the point. The point is that this is where the coins are. Um, this is what the mudlark, uh, the mud god uh, showed us, me and Carrie, Carrie Ann, uh, how to find coins on a particular spot. And uh, we tried it once he left and we didn't find anything. <laughs> Bless. And um, so anyway, I'm applying it today. And this is uh, the, the fifth coin in this spot. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So what we're looking at again, so uh, lots of rocks, lots of rocks. Kind of like a bit of a eroded patch and lots of bigger rocks. Uh, and it looks like things might collect and that there's a, a lot more erosion. So just started scraping a little bit and then straight away coins are coming up and that's the fifth coin already. Woohoo! Ah, things to do on a Saturday morning before you go shopping. I'm going to turn up to bloody Tesco's covered in mud again. Every time I go to the supermarket after I've been mudlarking, it's, it's so funny. Uh, people do think I'm homeless and um, they're ever so generous, I have to say. Just because I, I look a mess, I'm covered in mud, my face, there's mud on my face, my clothes, I'm wearing boots, uh, and, I, and I really look like I've just come out of the river. And uh, people offer me food. 
Oh, so great. There was one guy, honestly, he wanted to give me a bag of shopping. So sweet. This was down in um, uh, East London. People are so generous, aren't they? I, I had to explain that I'd just come off the river and that uh, actually I, I was uh, okay and to maybe give that to somebody else. Right, let's find some more coins. And uh, Mud God, you know, was saying about looking for little bits of uh, metal and he was finding uh, when he was doing this, but this was against the back wall that he was doing it. Uh, he was finding those, um, uh, God, I thought that was a coin, look at that. And it's not, it's a perfectly formed stone. Um, uh, he was finding uh, typefaces as well, which I'd never found before. And uh, brilliant when you find one for the first time and see it. And, uh, and this particular one that had it had um, X on it. It was so funny. <laughs> I'm going to uh, keep moving round on this spot because, um, well, because it's yielded. Five stones. Oh. Hey. Ah, greetings from New Zealand. I used to live on the Isle of Dogs until recently, and you had a permit. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. Ah, I bet you miss it. Yeah, Isle of Dogs is great. It's where I go with Carrie. Carrie's from the Isle of Dogs. If you don't know Carrie, uh, Carrie is, um, yeah, she's got a YouTube channel, Carrie Unlocking, but mainly she's on TikTok. She has a massive following on TikTok. There's like a, over 100,000 people follow her and her live streams. And she goes on uh, around London uh, looking for lost history. She's so amazing. It's worth uh, following her if you can have a look. And uh, if you're on TikTok, you have a look at TikTok as well. Right, so is this still consistent, this bit here, with the rest? I think it is. Just scraping, and all I'm doing is just scraping the top until I hit the kind of what's underneath. And so in this sense, it's the kind of the clay, and then I stop scraping. To be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. The mud god uh, showed me this, and I've been learning this from other mud blocks, and I'm getting a sense of it. But I am by no means an expert. But saying that, I have just found five coins in this particular spot, so uh, I can't be doing that bad. When the tide comes in, don't worry, this will be, uh, it will do its magic and it will all be back to as it should be. So the other thing to look for is where um, uh, bits of metal are, are collecting. And that's always a, a, a good spot to start looking for coins there. I'm just going to take you a little bit further here. Actually, this spot looks uh, good. Let's do this one here. Yeah, let's do uh, this here, and then uh, I'll take you further down. Oh, I tell you, so killer, I've got to get knee pads. I, I, I do this gardening thing, uh, this gardening uh, pad, which is great. Um, but uh, uh, sometimes, just sometimes, uh, something comes through, and then it's a uh, it's a real killer. God, it's so painful. All right, let me put you here. Um, take again this patch. So coin number six, just here. 
its way here. Big rocks, a lot of erosion, and it looks like they get caught in here and get stuck in here. And so even when the water comes over, they're knocking between the rocks, but don't move, don't move enough. I mean, I'm guessing. If you know better, comment, let me know. I'm still learning. Six coins though, that's not bad, is it? And this is just, uh, you know, trying to understand a principle about um, how the foreshore works and where to find coins. And this is kind of what I've learned. But look at that, six coins. So muddy mud locking. I mean, of course you would. Such a beautiful day today. You really feel kind of spring coming. I have to say though, it's a, it gets, a, the warmer it gets, the harder and harder it gets to wear wellies. I know some people are gonna have kittens over that. I end up wearing my Crocs when it's really summertime, it's just too warm. And then I just kind of stay off the mud. So it would be nice now that we've found coins, and there's six coins so far here. There's a lot of glass down here as well. Now that we've found um, six coins, they're uh, um, all modern, but we have to uh, really look at the principle. And I don't know whether, because of this, um, this black mud here, whether we can find older ones here. There we go. Look at that. Another coin. Six, number seven, is it? Amazing, isn't it? That man, look. So this is the trying to work out the principle on how to find coins, and just this little patch is one, two, three, four, five, six coins. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> and just here, it's so funny. Look at that. Number seven. Another one here. Eight. Just so amazing. Science of the foreshore, just amazing, isn't it? See, this is, um, i tell you what's so great about this. Um, I think that uh, because I'm starting to understand this principle on how coins collect and how you can find them and have confidence in that, I think, uh, um, and, and I haven't been down kind of the kind of central London, which, uh, which is the kind of the older part of the foreshore. I mean, I know it's all the same age, but um, it's kind of uh, uh, the deeper history there. And I think uh, as I'm developing my eye and, uh, and having more confidence on doing this and uh, having found <laughs> uh, this so far, so this is, um, let me tell you, it's 
uh, it's 10 and a half P. Um, but the principles there, um, I mean, incredible. Oh, Stephen, thank you so much. Ah, oh, bless, thank you. Um, I'll have a coffee on you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm, I, I think it's time I went back down to um, uh, some of the older parts of the foreshore and, uh, and try and apply this a bit. Amazing, isn't it? There's like, uh, I don't know how many coins now? Let me count again. Um, I just want to keep looking around this area because I find it deeply exciting. Uh, so here, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coins. Two, four, six, eight, nine and a half pence. Back of the net. How wonderful. And Stephen, bless you, thank you so much. So um, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep scratching on this bit. I was gonna go further down and, you see the thing is, oh God, uh, uh, the point of this is, you see, I'm down, um, I live down this neck of the woods. I live down in Woolwich, you see, this is Greenwich. And uh, I went down on my bike and I thought, I'd just pop down and have a look because my friend, uh, the real Andy Harris on Instagram said, oh, you, you know, it's worth having a look down here. So I've only kind of popped down on route to going shopping, but I don't know, I'm sensing that shopping can wait. And wow, I mean, <laughs> if, I, if I carry on here, yeah, it's just exciting, isn't it, you know? Anyway, let me, let's, uh, let's you and I, That if there's that many coins here and things are gathering here of interest round things which is what we want um, then it's worth spending some time here and um, uh, exploring this whole lot so let me where can I put you so you can see best uh, let me put you I'm gonna move over actually here Trying to think where's the best place so you can kind of get a, a, a view of the, the process. What if I moved, uh, I should do that spot up there really. So let me uh, turn this around for a second. So uh, let me let me show you what I, what I was looking at. And um, Ah, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, mate, say your name. Um, I'm going to get my glasses out because I can't read the screen. Uh, give me one second, then I can say your name. Um, bear with me one second. I'm going to uh, put you down just for a second here. Just while I uh, sort myself out. Bear with me one second. got my glasses on now uh, look under bridges you find loads more coins yeah you know when I go up London Bridge there's a place I always find coins but interestingly enough not just modern modern coins uh, find some of the old one at George there's something uh, uh, 1700 something uh, uh, coins under there as well uh, thanks so much Stephen thank you um, 
Hussein, thank you for joining. There, I've said your name. So, oh man, there's another coin here. So this is, oh man, this is just such a hot spot, isn't it? Okay, so, uh, so what do I want to show you? So, you can see like the big rocks and then you see these kind of patchy bits in between. I don't know if you can see that or if that makes sense. And then in these patchy bits, uh, I kind of get a sense that things as they're being moved will hit the rocks and get caught between the bigger rocks and then end up settling between them, like in these kind of patchy bits here. And then they get covered a bit with uh, shingle. Um, and that's where I'm finding the coins. I don't know if any of that makes sense. So I'm going to um, scrape a bit on this bit here. And uh, let me see if I can. I'm just going to uh, put this round. See, I've got to wear my glasses, otherwise, I can't see what's on the screen. What am I doing? Um, uh, Jesus died for our sins. We might be able to enter heaven. Yeah, not on the full show, I'm not sure. Not, not, not that you will, because. Um, uh, Anyway, um, what else have we got? Uh, rocks, uh, what's happening here? What are you doing? Um, I'm looking for my pension. I'm looking for my dignity, which I lost here. So um, for those of you who just joined, I'm on the Thames foreshore. Let me just flip this round uh, here. I'm a, a permit holder from the uh, PLA and uh, I'm uh, looking for lost treasure. Look at this. Oh, this is insane. It's another one. So uh, we're just um, just trying to go through the principle of how you find coins. And there was a particular patch which felt good. And so we've been digging and um, we found about 10 coins. Uh, now, albeit they're modern, but that's not the point. The point is um, the principle of how and where you find coins on the foreshore and how the tide works and how the foreshore works that would enable you to, to find those coins. So that's what we're trying to do here. And um, it's amazingly successful. Right, let me put you down and we can dig a bit more and scrape. And uh, let's see. I think the, what's uh, the insane thing of this is that it's just like a tiny patch and yet it yields so much. And again, go beyond the fact that they're modern coins. Um, what's interesting is just the principle on how you find coins and where they collect. And this is, uh, this is kind of trying to put to practice things that I've been learning, mainly you know, from the other fantastic uh, mud blocks that I bump into uh, on the foreshore, you know, that uh, we speak and, uh, you know, I can learn from them. And, uh, and of course, from the mud god, uh, Steve Brooker, I don't know if you know him, he was on the, uh, the TV show Mud Men, all about mud locking some time ago. Uh, but he's incredible. Oh my God, the stuff he has found. It's insane, just amazing. A knife. It's interesting, certainly uh, quite a lot of things have been collected here. Yes, yeah, so the uh, mud god I sometimes bump into, and he's great, and there's other mud larks that do this. Uh, they have special kind of permits and permissions, uh, but they do tours. So if you're interested in mudlarking, but uh, because there are no licenses available and you want to uh, try mudlarking, uh, go on a mudlarking tour. I'd recommend Steve Brooker. Uh, only, I mean, he's just brilliant. His understanding of how the river works is just amazing. And the stuff, oh my gosh, the stuff he's found. Just amazing, he's on Instagram, uh, the mud god. And uh, it's just amazing from all the, the years that he's been blocking. 
just truly brilliant. Right, I'm gonna go a bit further. Let's see if I can take you over here and keep looking. Amazing, you know, when uh, so I went out on um, oh gosh, I can't remember one day this week, <laughs> it all goes into a blur. Thursday, I think it was, um, with uh, my good friend Carrie Ann, Carry On Marking, and um, uh, Tunbridge Wells 1975, uh, Marina uh, Bud, and uh, Piro from Germany, and um, Ollie from Guernsey, and we we're all down. Um, uh, mudlarking. I never, I, I, I'd, I'd known of um, uh, Mariana Bud uh, before, but the others, uh, I, we, we was impromptu kind of meeting them. And um, it's just amazing, the river people. People that live on the river, not live on the river, they don't live on the river, but spend time on the river uh, mudlarking. They're just amazing, their stories. Uh, uh, and, and people, and, and I think that's a, uh, that's a kind of a, a beautiful part of this is um, as well as uh, you know the kind of solitude and the walking and the thinking and that you know when you do meet up with other mudlarks to, to uh, lark you know generally you go off and do your own thing and then you every time you find something you shout over and then you come running over and you find you know you share the joy of, uh, of something but yeah just uh, amazing people I mean Ollie uh, so on, on that Thursday where we were, there was one particular patch. So like a patch that I'm looking there where you get a sense of stuff happening. Uh, there was a patch and he had his eye in. So he's really tuned into it and... Uh, God, he found this buckle. This incredible buckle, which I reckon probably was restoration. I would think just, just the, the ornateness and the size of it. Maybe a shoe buckle of sorts. Or a... Uh, anyway. Um, just incredible and then in the same uh, patch he found this amazing uh, bone uh, ornate carved bone knife handle stunning and then in the same spot found this George the third or second uh, coin and it was just this one spot yielding just so much and what's amazing is he had his eye in so he was tuned into it and you know he could really see what was happening on the foreshore me i i, I was directly behind him like a, a a little puppy following him found absolutely nothing i just wasn't tuned in and it's interesting isn't it because you kind of um you know sometimes people get worried about oh yeah but you're showing people where where to mudlar yeah but you know what it doesn't matter you can come down here and you can find nothing or you could find everything it really depends on how tuned you're in and you know what you're looking for and just that you're in the right place at the right time so many factors involved. Best place in the world doesn't necessarily mean you're going to find anything. Worst place in the world, same. It's kind of you and, you know, and what you can see. Does that make sense? I mean, that's my opinion anyway, for what it's worth. Yeah, I asked uh, um, Ollie, number one mudlarking tip. He said, uh, be nosy, which is brilliant. Pick up everything, look at everything, because you just never know. And. Uh, Hero's uh, mudlarking tip was uh, safety. Just be careful down here because it's so full of hazards and um, I've got to keep an eye out on the tide. Uh, full of hazards and um, tides and know your exits and entry points and the mud and be, be so careful.
Right. Where else here? I think there's more to give. So, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring you up. And, uh... You found Pope John the First down there. <laughs> wow. Wow, a meteorite. Fantastic. <laughs> I'll show you the patch where I'm looking at now. So this is uh this is the, the little spot that did all the coins here. So all along here and down here, so that's about 12 coins. I'm just going to move over to this patch here and maybe a little bit behind and then I'm going to move on and go further down before the tide comes in, but well, the tide's turned so it's on its way in. The good thing actually uh, is that Ikea is close by and they got uh, great toilets there. I always end up going in there and uh, having a clean up, trying to get rid of some of the mud. Oh, I just thought that was another coin. <laughs> it's just the roundness, isn't it? It's the shell. Interesting, isn't it? This spot, this one spot yielding so much So again, what I'm doing, I'm scraping down to kind of the, um, what's underneath the top surface. And, um, yeah, so just a, just a minimal of scraping, just the top surface really and bringing out and seeing what's collected underneath there. Permit allows you to dig, but not very deep. Um, up to seven and a half centimeters in some areas. Some areas you're not allowed to dig at all. Uh, it's just eyes only, depending on the area. Let me have a little scout. Take you down a bit further down. Let me um 
So I'm just going to... So this is the patch which piqued my interest. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go a bit further down. I don't know if you can see it, there's a, another coin here. Again, this one just on the surface. The rest of them have been a little bit under the surface, some on the surface. Um, Hey Pet Pro, how am I going to clean them? Uh, I probably won't. Um, I will uh, uh, just wash them a bit, but then keep them. I mean, they're, uh, they're just modern coins and they go in a, um, a jar with all the other coins that I found. Um, but I, I won't, um, and if I do, I, you know, I'm a bit funny about cleaning coins. I'd rather keep them as they are for, for the most part unless you really want to kind of try and see the detail on something. So I would uh, leave it. I sometimes use a pit off on them. Yeah, you know, Stephen, that's how I got into mudlarking, really. Um, I've been a metal detectorist for so many years. And um, it was a uh, uh, lockdown. Nicola White kept on coming on my feed. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, and, and uh, so I started to get into mudlarking from her and then uh, managed to get my license before they stopped it all. Uh, because they're relatively clean and you can see the markings and they're very distinct and I kind of know those, uh, those kind of modern coins. Where do I find the coins? Well, this is uh, uh, just explaining on this particular patch. Um, you look for places where there's erosion and then you test a bit by taking off some of the, the surface to go down to the bedrock to see what's underneath and then you scrape a little patch and then you see what's underneath and things have, things have collected like little metal bits like washers uh, or nails uh, then it's a good indication there might be coins so I scrape and keep scraping so that's what I've been doing here I don't know if you can see that this is all around here been scraping and then uh, it's yielded uh, quite a few coins. Let me uh, do this a little bit more here and then I should um, uh, go a bit further down. I'm going to put you here.
beautiful day. <sighs> um, does anyone know what's going on? No, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. Do you? Anybody out there know what's going on? That's such a big question. Um, so what's going on here? Well, uh, I'll tell you. So I'm uh, mudlocking and uh, I'm a, a permit holder, a Port London Authority permit holder, and um, it's uh, not a very low tide, it's 0.8. I'm down on uh, Ballast Wharf, and um, I thought, ah, there's some ducks here. I thought um, I was just gonna do a recce this morning rather than do a proper mudlark, but um, I know some interesting patches here, so uh, what I'm doing is looking for, um, yeah, lost history. And uh, we found uh, one particular patch just down here, and started working it and came up with about, I can't remember how many, 12 coins or something. Quite incredible. And uh, I think I'm gonna move on now and go a bit further down and then I, sh I should shoot off because I'm supposed to be in the supermarket. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so that's what's going on. Yeah. I, I know, and I'm fortunate to be able to do it and I'm, uh, you know, and I feel sorry for those that want to do it but can't because of the permit situation. But, um, go on a mudlark tour. There's a certain uh, mudlarks have special permits where they can take uh, people down uh, uh, to do a tour. So go on a tour and you'll experience it and you'll, um, you know, you'll learn what to look for and how to look for it. And so when the time comes and when you can get a permit again, um, you'll be ready so uh, not all is lost uh, and also uh, do virtual mudlarking like today and you'll get a sense of it and learn as much as you can so when when you know that when the time comes and uh, you know then uh, you're, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna know sorry I'm looking at a million things here then you then you know what you're doing and, and how to look and where to look anyway uh, I'm gonna sign off now I'm gonna go a bit further down then I need to go and do my shopping Thanks so much for joining me, Stephen. Uh, thank you, brother. Thanks so much for your gift. That's very kind of you. Um, I wish you all uh, a most fantastic weekend and uh, enjoy the sunshine. At last, winter's turned to spring. God, that was a long winter. Anyway, it's here now, um, so let's enjoy it. Uh, is this my job? No, I'm an actor. I work in film and television. Um, I do this purely to keep out of prison. I'm joking, uh, purely because I love it. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a, a license so I, I can. Um, anyway, uh, much love to you all. And um, yeah, so uh, I will see you all soon. Uh, please uh, uh, do uh, uh, keep up uh, following my antics and, and all that. And uh, uh, like, subscribe, follow, share all those wonderful things and then that encourages me uh, to keep doing this kind of thing so um yeah so this is me um saying goodbye have the most amazing weekend thank you so much